Israel during the war is a complicated place. There's a lot of people affected. Everybody's affected in some way. And not just on the Israeli side. In Palestine, Judea, Samaria, there's a lot of things happening. Uh, more in the news today. But this is a story about a sponsored hospital program for Palestinians in Jerusalem. So the organization I work with uh, sponsors a eye surgery program for Palestinians in, uh, in the city of Jerusalem. For a few years now, there's been people coming and being sponsored for eye surgeries. There's a lot of need, apparently. I'm not sure if this is only like a regional thing or just they don't have the right uh, hospitals in Palestine to, uh, to do these surgeries. A lot of times it's the elderly uh, or, or kids that are born with uh, minor, sometimes it's minor defects that you can't even tell but there's like a, a squint in one eye or both eyes actually that will, if you don't treat it, then over time there's chronic headaches, migraines, um, a bunch of different problems. Sometimes it's more you can actually see the difference in the eyes and then the kids get bullied and things like that. So the sponsor program brings people from Palestine who can't afford these surgeries and they don't have a place to treat uh, the condition in Palestine. They come over, they get a special permit to come to into Jerusalem. A lot of times it's a big hassle just for people. Not everybody can cross over into Israel from Palestine. They only give out like from Gaza uh, during or right before the, um, the attacks on, on the kibbutzes from Gaza. Uh, there was like 20,000, 17,000 um, workers, work visas issued for people to come over. Now that's all canceled. And there's a, there's a bunch from, uh, from Judea and Samaria as well. And sometimes it's not a border town either. They travel to the border and then they cross into Israel and travel some more and, uh, and work. That is a whole other story in itself, how, how that whole thing um, happens for, for people uh, coming to look for work. There's a big need in, in Palestine. They don't make and there's not enough jobs and they don't make any money there. If they come into Israel, they make three, four times, five, ten times probably as much as they can in Palestine, especially when there's no work in Palestine. So they go through the trouble and a lot of times it's um, anything happens and they can get, they can get their visas um, taken away. It's a whole other story. I'll, I'll, I'll get into that at some other point. The hospital helps the family, and it's not the whole family, it's, it can only be one guardian, one adult with a child. They actually go back and forth a few times, they come in for a checkup, they come in for a diagnostic, they can come in for a prep, and then they come in and stay overnight. And in the morning they do the surgery, it's a pretty quick operation, I've been in the theater during the surgery recording that. The recovery is pretty quick, the patient is released the same day, they bring him back like three weeks later or something for a checkup. It's not a big surgery, but it is a big deal for the child, especially because it changes the, the, the way they, they look, the way they see, and fixes a bunch of other problems. That's about the surgery, but here's the thing. We had all these patients that were being treated. They were coming from Bethlehem, and all of a sudden the war starts. And they can no longer cross into Israel because it's a security threat, all the... Uh, visas are canceled, all the traffic back and forth stops, and basically they're stuck. And all these people that were on the list to get treated now have to wait. And waiting an extra year for a child with a condition like that can really deteriorate things. So basically, a couple of weeks ago, we started again. We had two surgeries. Uh, both uh, youngsters, a nine-year-old and a four-year-old. They came in. I was there to film their stories. I'm actually going back today for the the after, like the recovery checkup. The hospital is a Palestinian hospital in Jerusalem, which for me living here, I don't know. I mean, maybe politically it makes sense, but in practice, it's weird. Uh, the very first time I went there years ago and um, the person in charge of this of this program, he gave us a tour and he told us about all the 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 things that they have, and he, he kept saying, you know, this is the only um, treatment like this in all of Palestine. This is the only, the best specialist in all of Palestine. And he keeps saying all this, and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, except we're in Israel. 
he finishes the tour and then he says, somebody from our groups asked the question, so why do you need, um, why do you need our support, external support? If, the, if Palestine is taking care of your hospital, the Palestinian government, then why not just ask for more budget? So he says, you can't expect a government that's based 80% on hatred to take care of its people. And for me, that's always been a pretty, it's like a knife to the chest type thing. It's like, this hurt. Because it's the truth. Because, and because somebody who is uh, basically an official saying this, and it's no, the government's not trying to hide it. And they know it's true. And they, and they depend on, on support. So these Palestinian families bring their children to a, into Israel to a Palestinian hospital. But their whole surgery is paid for by Christians. And it's, it's always an interesting dynamic talking to these people. Not that I can talk. I don't speak Arabic. We, also have, we have a person working with us who is in charge of Arabic, uh, the Arabic sector. And she's actually a, a Christian Arab. That's a whole other story. There's a lot of Christian Arabs around Israel, if you didn't know. We can get into that at some other point. But she translates. And it's always good. But like this last family with a little one, with a four-year-old, uh, because the nine-year-old's mother is actually Christian and lives in a Christian area there in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is still pretty open to Christians, even though the Christian population has declined severely. But there's churches and there's pastors and um, not just like historical churches, of course, um, that as well, but active evangelical churches and people going over and uh, missionaries come and stuff like that. Anyway, the four-year-old comes with the mom and the dad. They live in, in Hebron. Um, and they say, like, I interview them and we talk about things like, you know, what do you think about... Uh, getting this the surgery like when you didn't know that it, it would be sponsored how would you how, how did you think at that time how, how you would pay for it and he says this is my child and I would do anything to get the money for the surgery because it's important for his health and that's such a real thing you know father taking care of a child it doesn't matter who you are or where you are and what you believe, but you do that for your family. This is not the first case and not the last case. There's been some really crazy cases. Members of, of terrorist organizations in Gaza who need urgent medical help, like heart attacks, uh, cancer, and, and they are brought over, their lives are saved here, their, or their, their families, their, their wives and children, things like that, and they are sent back to continue their work that they've been doing, sending projectiles over the border. There was a surgeon that helped uh, a terrorist. He saved his life. He is an Israeli surgeon. Uh, he was interviewed about why he did it, and he talked about, you know, being a doctor, he, he can't discriminate whether, you know, who's who. He saved his life, sent the guy back, and the surgeon's son or family member actually died in this war. And there's crazy stories about Israeli medics helping Palestinians, and this is, this is one of them. So I'm interviewing the four-year-old's father about the situation. He says, and I asked him, do you know that this is a Christian organization that's paying for this? And he says, yes, I found out about that, and I think it's great that people can come together like this and take care of the children. So that's the story. Bethlehem, if you don't know, is, is a couple of miles from Jerusalem. You're in Jerusalem, you take a couple of roads, you come to a, a, a checkpoint, and you're in Bethlehem. But it's a different world with no access or limited access to medical, with limited access to work. And the war has really affected these people. But thank God we're able to continue after months of waiting. We're able to do more surgeries. I'm going back to see this uh, little one uh, after recovery. And we can help more Palestinians because there's some generous people on the other side of the world sending money this way. And we're here to distribute that money, working with the hospital, bringing these people over. People's lives are improved. Children's lives are improved, even with war happening around us. So take away, the problems are not going away. Not in Israel, 
Probably not in your life or my life either. But we kind of have to work around. Find a way, even if it takes time, work with it and be generous and help others. Come back tomorrow, I'll tell you another story.